of faith. This is the way. Truth is, I am I am. Hello, critics, non-critics, and friends. Welcome to the Film Optics Podcast, brought to you by the Drive-In Podcast Network, where we discuss film, TV, and all things Hollywood here on the show. I'm your host, Christian, and again, we're back again for another week with my trusty elf, Devin, and we are here to give our thoughts on the latest miniseries to hit Disney+. Plus. We're talking about Hawkeye, episode four, titled Partners, am I right? Before we am begin right? to... Am I right? Are, are, we're, we're partners, right? I think. Am I right? Am I right? It's, it's more a question. It's, it's not a statement. I mean, she sent, she sent I, wish st- they would, I wish they would have spelled it the uh, all in one word. A-M-I-R-I-T-E. Yeah. A-M-I-R-I-T-E. Yeah, it actually would have been pretty cool. I like that. I don't know, I don't know if a few people would have gotten that or not. But uh, before we begin today's show, you can listen to our podcast on platforms around the internet. If you're a new or seasoned listener to the show, we would love to hear from you guys. Follow us on Instagram and follow us on Twitter at Film Optics. That is Optics for the next. Uh, started a nice little contest on the um, on the uh, ugh, Twitter account. So for those of you who don't know, really quick before we get into this review, quick little announcement time. Uh, we're going to be doing uh, a Matrix franchise revisited series. Uh, was originally dubbed the movie series review, but I looked back and I'm like, you know what? That's that's it's too it's too wordy. It's way, it's way too wordy. Movie series review. So it's it's a mouthful, you know. So uh, moving forward for the rest of our um, franchises that we do cover, it's going to be dubbed franchise revisited. So that will be essentially movie series or a big franchise of series of movies where we cover here on the podcast. Uh, so, you know, but yeah, so we already started that with our uh, Harry Potter movie series review uh, now dubs, as I said, a franchise revisited. So definitely check out our amazing eight episodes with our wonderful, wonderful guests and friends of the show who joined us on that journey. So moving forward, Franchise Revisited, baby. Matrix going to be dropping December 11th, the first one, the, the one that started it all. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Just wanted to put that little announcement in there. But Devin, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. It's a Thursday. Steelers play tonight. Mm. Game Awards are tonight. Won't be watching. But they are tonight. <laughs> because the Steelers are playing. Yeah. I think we yeah. fit, uh, face the Vikings this week. So yep. that'll be fun. Hopefully. <laughs> Whew. Barely, barely won against the Ravens. We need, we take those. We, yeah, we we do. We did not, unfortunately, win against the Bengals uh, round one. But whew, that was a hard game to watch. I'm not gonna lie, dude. I, I I cut it off halfway through. I did. I was I was very tired. Had to. Had to. Absolutely. I mean, a it's when you're losing that bad, I feel like it's okay to turn off the TV and just walk away. <laughs> yes, it's needed. It really, really is, man. But yeah, we're here going to be talking about some Hawkeye episode four titled Partners. Am I right? So, Devin, are you ready to get into our review of Hawkeye episode four? Yes, bro. All right, bro. Well, Oh, we, we, no, we didn't get a lot of bros in this we, episode. We didn't get any bros this episode. We did not. No. We did not. I'm very, very uh, sad about that, to be completely honest. But, hey, it's all right. We'll be back. To, to be honest, we didn't get we didn't get much this episode. Okay. We did, but it was given to us extremely earlier in the year. And, yeah, we'll talk about that. But I feel like they're just the marketing is kind of weird so far for this sh- this series. Yeah. I, I, I do agree with you there for sure. It's 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 been weird. We'll definitely talk about it. So, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back with our Hawkeye episode four review right after this short break. Can I tell you a secret? I'm working with an Avenger. Can I speak to your manager? Didn't realize you were supposed to bring guns. All right, we're back. You just heard a little snippet of the one of the many promotional materials out there for um, Hawkeye. So yeah, thank you for uh, Disney 
to, uh, you know, the, the marketing. We're, we're, we got to talk about the marketing for sure. We're going to be talking about it. So this is our Hawkeye episode four review here on the uh, Film Optics podcast. So again, um, if you haven't been here before, what we like to do is get to more of the non-spoiler section first. And then once you hear this little bad boy, oh, not my God, that is the third time I have done that, like within the past few episodes. Same. There you go. I, I, I got to change that light to be something else. <laughs> but yeah, so once you hear that, it means we're going to begin the spoilers. So we're going to give our initial reactions here. Um, I'm actually going to go first really quick uh, for this episode. Um, I liked it a lot. You know, it is more of a wholesome episode. Well, I feel like the last episode was wholesome as well. Um, you know, it literally starts off with um with pretty much where the last episode ended you know when they're inside the uh the bishop mansion and uh you know kate's uh mother's boyfriend came coming through and i do apologize i am blanking on his name right now uh so many characters to keep up with in so many different shows um but it, i wanted to ask you is that the same guy who played the uh diabetic in um deadpool 2 is that the same guy who you're referring to so, uh, Kate's mother's boyfriend, the, um, Jack, Jack. Yes. Is that the same guy who played the, uh, diabetic hero in Deadpool two when, um, he's kind of just, Oh my God. He, he, I don't he had, think like, so. He's, he's a, he's a Mexican American actor. He's been in mostly like Mexican stuff. He was in better call Saul too. Oh, that's, that's where I remember him from. Okay. This is like his second or so uh, American project. Okay. Okay. I wasn't entirely sure. So, well, thank you for clearing that up. But um, yeah, so I, I thought this episode was really good. Um, I will say when it comes to, you know, the big reveal at the end, which we'll get into, it's, it's, it's all about the marketing. Um, sometimes I feel like Disney and a lot of these other studios do such a good job at marketing that it kind of overhypes um or it, it it puts people's expectations out of line because you know the marketing for this for especially for marvel you know they're going to spend all the money on this um when it came to certain reveals we we knew the certain reveals were happening we didn't know when but i will say it really sucks at least for me because i checked twitter right before i hit play Devin. Right before I hit play, and that reveal popped up. It was the first thing on my timeline. And I was like, okay, I'm not mad mad, but I didn't know when that person was popping up. Well, D Disney did it earlier in the week for you anyways. So. That, that, that is true. And I, I really wish they would just stop because... Yeah, they're pushing out like a like a an episode trailer like every week. Like it's just so not necessary for this one. Not for TV, no. You don't need it. Yeah, it's like they've they have one for next week already, and it's like everyone's talking about how next week's gonna break the internet, which just kind of spoils what's what's gonna happen. Yeah, like, the last two. They just they, just just saying that it's like all right, we know who's gonna show up. Yeah, it was the power broker, of course. <laughs> yeah, that's the answer. <laughs> Yeah, but it, you know, it, I did like the episode. Um, it's I I don't know if it was my favorite. I think episode three is still my favorite by far. But then again, that reveal was pretty awesome. I'm not gonna lie. Um, it was you know the the final act of the final scene, I guess you could say, of the show is what really um, helped for me. But overall, I did enjoy it. Um, not. You know, and, and there's re there's really there's great scenes in here. You know, I'm, I'm just trying not to get into spoilers, but I'm going to pass it over to Devin so we can give his initial uh, reaction to Hawkeye episode four. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I was kind of disappointed with this one. I feel like you remember back when we covered Loki, everyone was complaining about I think it was episode three. Everyone was complaining about how that was a filler episode. Yeah. When they're talking like in the bar and trying to like get to know each other. Yeah. I think this is way more of a filler episode than that. Because like, sure, there's there's the scene in the beginning that shows um, Clint and um, Kate like their relationship is is growing stronger, but we already knew that. We didn't know that Loki and Sylvie were gonna have a strong relationship going in, and that episode was what bonded them together. But 
for this series, we know that they're going to be close because, of course, it's their their besties. But um, other than that, I also agree that the reveal at the end it just kind of got ruined because they decided to put a certain part of it in the trailer for promotional before the episode even comes out. It's just kind of a strange decision because, I mean, we know, I guess we, we can just get into spoilers now, I guess. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're about to get into the spoilers. That is your first spoiler warning here on the show again. Oh, wow. <laughs> big you know spoiler what? There. Spoilers. There, there you go. go. There you go. Flor- Florence Pugh. Florence Pew, 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 pew. There you go. <laughs> but yeah, we, we knew going into the series that she was going to make an appearance. Now, you could argue that even us knowing that is annoying. Like, they didn't have to announce that she would make an appearance in the show because it could it just could have been a complete surprise like you do with, with some other characters. But um, it's, it was definitely cool to look forward to knowing that she would be in this. So that part was cool. But then in that promo they showed, it was probably last week they showed it, they showed a masked female figure <laughs> fighting, <laughs> fighting Kate Bishop and Clint. And it's like, okay, mm. we know who that is immediately. Like... You did not have to show it. It was like only like a two second clip too. They did not have to show it. Yeah, I I agree. It was very um, it was too on the nose. It's like okay, who else would it be? I wonder. Is it the power broker? No, it's not. You know any of the Dormelage. Clearly, it is not Black Widow. Um, but we'll definitely talk about Black Widow as well because she's she's mentioned quite a lot throughout throughout here um there were uh, nicer moments with you know the the christmas little christmas party scene that they had i think that was pretty cool and then that conversation yeah like, i kind of like how the larpers are like they weren't just a one and done they're kind of becoming like recurring characters i actually do like them as like a batch yeah. of characters it's it's fun because it's like you know they're they're doing their own thing and you know kate goes to uh, visit them she's like wow you know you guys take this super seriously and it's like, yeah, I mean, yes, they do. <laughs> yes, they do. Um, but I think for me, the most interesting part of this episode is what's going on with Laura Barton. Because she, uh, she's she got a lot going on, like a lot more than anyone expected. I feel like prior to the show, everyone was just like, all right, it's Hawkeye's wife. Uh, she's, she's kind of the stay-at-home mom. She kind of just goes with the flow and lets him do his superhero thing. But she's like really involved with everything that he does on that side of things like more than anyone else thought she would be. She's she's like strategizing with him. She's talking to him about what he's going to do, like what he's done in the past. He's texting her to get answers on on uh, Kazi the Clown. And she has contacts or knows people to, to be able to get those answers for him. Like she might be a superhero. Yeah, I mean, she, she's like basically, she's like Hawkeye's uh, Oracle um from yeah. yeah so it's you know but for, even even more so because she's actually like going out and getting answers yeah it's it's, it's not like i mean with oracle you know, that it's, you know barbara gordon behind you know in a wheelchair type thing literally kind of like a a, a a guy guy in the chair you know <laughs> all that stuff but yeah it i i really like how uh you know well, miss clinton i guess we could, uh <laughs> call her <laughs> so I've, I've been seeing some theories that um she might be mockingbird i heard about that too uh, now, obviously, Mockingbird was a character in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which is not canon to my knowledge, at least. Definitely not fully canon. There for some M- for the are. MCU? I thought, oh, was it not? I thought Feige was just kind of separating from it. But, um, yeah, she, I mean, obviously, there is a Mockingbird there. I feel like, because in the comics, I saw somebody mention in the comics, like, an 80, during the 80s run, Hawkeye and Mockingbird were married for a long time. So it just kind of makes sense if that were the case. And it could also be a case where Mockingbird is just like a, a term for like a passed on term, like like Black Widow. Like she's a widow, but she's a, she's a Mockingbird. It's not just one person. It's a lineage of, of people. So that could be the case. But she's getting a lot of screen time, especially this episode. She's speaking different languages. She's getting intel. She's She's got something going on. We got to find out. Because <laughs> Lena Cardellina is great. She's a she'll always be, she'll always be our um, our Velma. Yeah. Oh, dude, I had the hugest crush on her growing up when she was Velma. Of course, it was crazy. I'm like, oh man, she she's had a great career as well. So it's you know, but yeah, I, that is very interesting. Um, I really like how Clint's family or 
I said Miss Clinton earlier. Excuse me. I meant to say. <laughs> Anyway, I, I like how Miss Cl Clinton, Miss Clinton, <laughs> Clint Barton, Miss Barton. There we go. Um, I, I really like how they're not just sh like, oh, you know, like Hawkeye's family there because, you know, he's got to get home for Christmas type thing. And, you know, he, he's, he has those conversations with his wife and it's very it's it's serious you know she understands the situation and obviously you know her kids do uh his kids their kids do as well uh minus the little one uh, you know a little more oblivious but it's very um it's it, it's not like on the nose but i just like how they're giving clint's um family a purpose instead of just you know oh you know every scene like just like oh man when is when is that coming home? Like yeah, they are, but they aren't. Cause you know, we, we, we got Miss Barton on the case, like 100%. But uh, what did you think about the watch scene? That was, that was interesting. Yeah. I, don't, I mean, I don't know whose watch this is. The first thought that comes to mind is just that it's a Tony Stark watch because he's used watches before. He had that suit that kind of like materialized out of a watch. I think it was in, in, in game maybe. When he had that, or I think that was in the chest when he like double tapped it in Endgame. Oh, oh, Endgame. I'm sorry. I feel like there was a watch one at some point, but yeah, I don't know who's who's watch this is or what's in it. I feel like what's there's going to be some kind of like like chip or like USB in it or something that has some information. But we're we're, we're going to find out because we only got two episodes left. Echo had it, and now um, Kate retrieved it for now at least. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm not sure whose watch it is either. Um, I was gonna say, I mean, it's a classy watch. Tony Stark is a classy guy, so I mean, it could be. It definitely has Tony vibes. It is a Rolex, of course. <laughs> yes, um, it could be. It could be the watch from the WandaVision that um, I forgot what they called it, but the the, the Striker watch. Oh like yeah, that, that maybe. commercial. I was gonna say maybe it belonged to the uh, the good old Captain America. You know, he's, he's a classic. I feel like he would have some kind of nice Rolex or something throughout his uh, years on this earth. But I don't know. I really don't know whose watch it is. Um, or it could be Mister Kingpin. I'm just saying he is a fancy guy. He is a very fancy guy. A very very fancy guy. So um, I I think it's safe to say we're like. 90% sure we're going to get um, Kingpin, uh, Vincent, Mr. Vincent playing Kingpin again. Um, I mean, if Daredevil shows up too. <laughs> He's going to show up in Spider-Man. I am going to lose. Because why else would Kevin Feige out of nowhere make that announcement? That oh, yeah. About next yeah. about uh, it's, it's very convenient that that comes out before Spider-Man and before the ending of this show like he's gonna show up in one of them it's very weird because why would you feel the need to display that information to the world at all it doesn't make any out sense of nowhere out of nowhere saying oh you know if if uh if charlie cox came back he would be playing daredevil like why 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 would you say that it's very uh it's I mean, it, it, it's it's an if it's a big if don't get me wrong but we're, we're seeing through your magic hat Feige. We, we we see what you're on to <laughs> yeah it, it i don't know man it's it's strange i i don't get it but i guess we can now talk about the uh the big elephant in the room for yelena how, how did you feel about her reveal i thought it was I thought the the fight scene was on the roof was very cool, very widow esque. Just her moves, of course. Her tech seems like it's getting weak. Like her her electro, her shocking uh, tech used on uh, Clint and Echo. She, she just kind of like brushed it off. I remember it being a little more powerful before, but maybe it's just maybe people are just getting used to it. I don't know. Maybe she's like losing her mojo or something. But like, maybe I she just wants like. Completely non-lethal. Yeah, that that could be too. Because remember, she is essentially now probably working for the Thunderbolts, or will be at some point. So that's going to be weird. But I also wanted to bring up. Uh, I'm not sure if you saw this, Devin. I think you did. That Florence Pugh actually got like her account got blocked. On yeah, that's that's interesting. Yeah, like so for 
everyone out there listening, Florence Pugh's account, her uh, in- Instagram account, got blocked for her sharing her scene in Hawkeye. It was like yesterday, like afternoon into last night. So Wednesday, like the day of Wednesday. It's interesting. I wonder I wonder how that works. Like obviously in their contract, they can't say or show anything before the show comes out. But like on release day, I'm guessing they're in the clear. Yeah. And depending on when she posted it too, it's like, you know, her she was blocked for posting episode four spoilers. And like she actually put a little message. I think it, I think it might have been Wednesday morning. Possibly the first post about it. I don't know. She, she, she wrote, she said, I never thought me posting love about a show in which I appear uh, would get taken down dot dot. But here we are. And someone on here complained. <laughs> so I've been blocked from posting my own appearance on a show that I'm very much in beyond ridiculous being in hashtag Hawkeye is a privilege. And thank you to all who welcomed me on set and off and all who are watching such a nice message. I'm going to give that's That's a nice. I like that Florence Pugh. I like that a lot. Congratulations. Wonderfully said, wonderfully said for sure. So she's been pretty vocal about it, but you know, I think that was just the only main post that she uh, said on here. So it's, it's like, it's weird because Like back in June, July, Feige said they like, well, number one, they they told us beforehand that Yelena's sister would be taking over uh, Black Widow's, um, you know, her stead, her 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 position. And then they told us, oh, yeah, she's also going to be in Hawkeye. And like, I really like I appreciate the transparency, but it's like too much transparency. Because, like, they didn't say anything for WandaVision. Well, yeah. <laughs> you they know. said quite a few things for WandaVision. <laughs> I think Loki is the one where pretty much everything was kept a secret. Yeah. I mean, for Falcon, it was, you no, know, who's the power rogue? But see, people thought that Kingpin was going to be in uh, Falcon as well. So I really don't know. He could still be related. He probably has a relationship with Power Broker. Yeah. I mean, at this Our point. Connection. Well, what would you say? Like a connection. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, Kingpin has all the connections. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like a it's like a hard thing to balance because you want to drum up interest for the series, and they feel like when you have a young star like Orange P.U., you, you gotta let people know that she's gonna be in it because she draws a crowd because she's amazing. Mm. But also, it, it would have been really cool to have this be a surprise. It but really the, would have. The the teaser last week was was definitely too much. Like that was just not needed at all. So I will say I did not see the teaser until like the day before because I just I just don't really look up Disney marketing all that much or just in general. I mean, I, I believe I am following them um, or maybe I, I accidentally like um, muted them or something. But overall, it's been. Um, yeah, I just didn't really see too much on my side, at least. So I was wondering, like, what's everyone talking about? And then. Literally yesterday is when I heard everyone's like, yeah, yeah, you know, episode the showrunner said episode uh, you know, the, the the penultimate and the finale are gonna be very uh, you know, mind blowers. And I'm like, I I didn't see I didn't seek it out, I guess is what I'm saying. And then, you know, everyone else is kinda like, Oh well, you know, it is what it is, but I don't know, man. It it kinda sucks. I mean, you don't really see I I I, I appreciate everything Disney has been doing with Marvel. Like Literally since day one, they have turned this studio into a, a superhero dynasty essentially, you know, and I, and I see a lot of people out there saying that, oh, well, you know, Hawkeye's just very mid and it's, it's not as good. And I just want to not, you, you can't have like, you, you can't have the seafood, like buffet or like the the steak dinner or you know the oven roasted chicken each and every week like or some good old pizza or some good old pizza like some really really good like new york style pizza you can't have pizza every single day no matter how good it is you can't have it it i mean it's just not every marvel property has to shake things up has to you know break barriers and you know shock the entire world 
sometimes a Marvel movie or a, a Marvel series, it's just that. It's a Marvel series. It's a Marvel movie. And this is a Christmas-themed-esque, you know, superhero tale that we're telling here. It's very grounded. I'm enjoying it, you know, despite all of its flaws. Like, th this, is, this is something I can potentially, between this and... I mean, between this and WandaVision, especially this, this is something I can definitely go back and just watch every year during the holidays. Just have a good time. I mean, it's a great cast. It's telling a great story. You know, we're getting some great reveals. And, I mean, sometimes I do wish it was a little bit longer. But, you know, I'm, I'm here for the ride. I, I don't think every Marvel property or, like, Marvel project has to be the same as WandaVision or Loki because you can't really compare those because those are not grounded stories at all. Those are dealing with the multiverse. Falcon and Winter Soldier and Hawkeye or not, those are more street level as well, more so with Hawkeye. Hawkeye is very street level crime, but I, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. I, I don't think we need to have our cake and eat it too. Like, all the time when it comes to this stuff. Just enjoy it for what it is. If you don't like it, that's fine. If you like it, great. It's amazing. Just, you know, it's 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 not the end of the world. Like saying things are very mid. It's I mean, as much as I didn't like Falcon and Winter Soldier, there's a lot of episodes in there that I really did enjoy. It's just I just didn't enjoy the journey all that much. There was a lot of besides Falcon and Winter Soldier, out every other character, this I I don't think the show did a great job of having me care about those characters all that much. John Walker, I think they did a good job with as well. But I mean, when, what was it? Battlestar Galactica or <laughs> battle beast. No, that's not, I'm sorry. That's invincible. <laughs> well, it was like Battlestar or the, the, I forgot his name. Uh, John Walker's like right hand man. Like when Carly Morgenthau, like freaking <laughs> tackled him into the end zone. I didn't care. He was just he was just dead. I was like, oh wow, that sucks. And I moved on. They they didn't do a good job of building up a lot of character. That and Isaiah, I will say. There's a lot of good things to say about Falcon Winter Soldier, but my point is not every like a lot of people didn't like Falcon and Winter Soldier. It seems like it's the same with Hawkeye, but not every Marvel movie, not every Marvel TV series has to be a banger. Like I understand that's what we expect from it. It's just like with PlayStation. You know, they, they have a lot of exclusive games. Not all of them are going to appeal to everyone. And it's just, it's, it's just, a, just a different slice of the pie. Rant over. <laughs> well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I wasn't sure if you disagreed or not. I was like, oh, man, I was waiting for Devin to jump in. <laughs> but, uh, Devin, we are coming I, up I here. Will say, mm -hmm. I will say Falcon Winter Soldier gets mentioned, like, every week. It's just like... It was, it was just average. Yeah. And they had COVID issues. That's just whatever. And it sucks. It sucks that they did because I wanted I wanted a, a, a quote unquote, you, I guess you could say better show. But I just, I don't know. It was something that, um, something that we just, it, it, it was, it was, it was unfortunate, you know, everything that was happening. It, it sucks. It really does. But unfortunately, there's nothing we can do about it. But there's one good thing out of it. We're getting a Captain America 4 movie with, Yes. Sam, Sam, Sammy, Sam, uh, <laughs> Sam so, Wilson, Sam Matt. Wilson, <laughs> cool ass suit. Yeah, serious. It was a really nice suit. So yeah, man, oh, can you imagine if Spider Man was in there just for like a second? A second. They wanted it. He could have won it. If Feige said no, I'm like, this is in New York, my guy. What do you mean? Where is Spider Man right now? Where is he? I want to know. But yeah, we're gonna get out of here. Uh, we're definitely coming up here on time. So I'm going to pass it over to Devin so we can give his um, his score for Hawkeye episode four titled Partners. Am I right? As far as score, I'm, I'm feeling like a like a 71, like somewhere around there. Like definitely did not um, did not reveal too much. And we didn't learn very much this episode. There's a couple little things here and there, but overall... I would say this is more filler than anything else we've gotten so far, mm. but I am definitely looking forward to what's to come. And I feel like it's, it's going to end off. These last two episodes are going to be probably pretty good. I'm, I'm hoping so, man. It's, 
Yeah, it's I, I do agree with you there. I would say I would give it about like a 75 out of 100, like 7.5 out of 10. You know, like I think it's a very solid episode. I I, I definitely I, I enjoyed it a lot. Um, it's you know, we're getting we're getting towards the end of the wire here, you know, and I, I feel like some people are very quick to judge a series before it ends. Cause like no, like you know, we talked about Falcon. You know, it wasn't my favorite. Like I've said a million times, but you know, looking back, like on the completed journey, it's it's about the journey. It's not about the finale, and you you have to wait. Look, wait until a series is done, and then go back and marinate and try. You know, if something stirs in you, then yeah, like you know, then you can rank it. I was, it it was you know like. It, when it comes, people were ranking like the premiere episodes. I'm like, okay, that's something you could do. But I just feel like, you know, we're, we're so quick to get to the end so we can get to the next thing. It's like, let's, let's sit back, relax and enjoy some Hawkeye. Cause I am loving it so far. It's a very fun tale, you know, issues and all every, every, every single TV show out there has issues, but yeah, it's, it's great stuff. So yeah. Um, so he's a 71 out of 100 for Devin, 75 out of 100 for me. So that's going to wrap up our episode here today of episode, ep uh, episode, episode, wow. Episode four of Hawkeye titled Partners, am I right? I just really like that title. I don't know why. I really, really do. But uh, what's coming up on the podcast, you ask? What's coming up on the show? We have more Hawkeye coverage, like I mentioned before. We'll be dropping on Wednesdays. Uh, this week was, eh, we were a day off, but, you know, things happen. And like I mentioned earlier in the show, we're going to be uh, dropping our uh, Franchise Revisited uh, Matrix Trilogy. Ooh, wow, man. I, I still can't believe we're done with Harry Potter. I, I feel like we should still be going with that, to be completely honest. But we're here with our next Franchise Revisited. Uh, now now dubbed Franchise Revisited with The Matrix. Uh, we're going to be dropping that on December 11th. And then we have Spider-Man No Way Home dropping on December 16th, baby. Oh, it's going to be a lot of fun for sure. And we'll definitely keep you guys posted on our Matrix Reloaded uh, episode that we'll be dropping uh, so hopefully sometime early next week. Uh, just follow us on Twitter for that. But not only will we be doing a Spider-Man No Way Home review. I will be writing a Spider-Man No Way Home uh, review for InTheSessionFilm.com. So definitely go over there and check out all the amazing content. They have a, a fantastic podcast and an amazing group of writers, of which I am one of many. I, I honestly don't think I'm all that good, but... Definitely check out my uh, review of Spider-Man No Way Home that will be dropping there next week. I want to say either the either the 14th, 15th, or the 16th, or maybe the 17th when it actually drops um, on Friday. So between those four days, definitely check out, uh, definitely look for my review over there. And also, I'm going to be writing a review for The King's Man, also for In Session Film. Dot com. So definitely uh, check that out. I think the embargo for that is the 14th, I want to say. Saw it. Had a pretty good time. Had a pretty good time. What was it? Wasn't that bad. And also, I'm going to try to squeeze in a What's Your Season 2 written review for musiccitydrivein.com. Um, it really just depends. Hopefully, maybe just a first reaction of like the first episode. I do not know just yet, but definitely follow me over at Music City Nerd uh, for those updates as well. So, Devin, you ready to close out? Oh, yeah. All right. We're going to get out of here for you guys. And that is a wrap for today. Thank you all for listening. And if you enjoy the show, leave us a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts. And follow us on Twitter and Instagram to stay in the know. That was Devin. My name is Christian, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.